Hey guys, it's Noon here, and I am bringing you uh, this, f well, the f first game of the final series of the Asus Republic of Gamers tournament held at the beginning of August. And this is going to be between down in the bottom corner on TSL4 Entombed Valley. It is going to be Liquid Tasia, and up in the top corner it's going to be SKMC, so cross spawns on this map. And it does have neutral supply depots, so they can't do a Nexus or CC wall off. And so we're going to go into standard drone production. And the SCV going off to construct the uh, supply depot and the pylon going down. So pretty standard on uh, 9 for both players. I think Tejas might have been on 10 because he's got the extra 1 supply on the, on the command center, I think. Um... But you can see Tasia's hotkeys, all about five of them set to the command center. So, we've got SKMC up here. MC is one of the best Protosses. I think he's actually slightly behind in rankings than Seed at the moment, because Seed won the last GSL. However, um, the GSL... Has season 4 of 2012 has started and uh, the first games of Code S were held today which was pretty epic, I managed to catch a couple of those before I started recording these and probe checking that there is no that, that it's not close spawns, it is in fact cross spawns so I'll probably be checking out this one next and of course he'll find a very unneutral supply depot there and the sneaky barrack positioning going for Tasia. However, having a barracks here, if he doesn't decide to float it anywhere, means that if there's any drop there, it'll be instantly spotted. And even if the and if there's some marines, it'll probably help take it down. But because we're playing Protoss, there's not going to be any drops for quite a while. Well, any with any race, there's not going to be any drops for quite a while. So beginning the th wall off looks as though it's going to be a triple supply depot. And there's a marine out. He has seen the probe and the probe will go down, but not before he sees the factory and the barracks up in the top corner. And then another marine pops out and just finishes the job. So, moderately early gas here for Tasia. And MC's got one gas, so warp gate just been thrown down for MC, as well as chronoing a stalker out in case there's some early scouting. Sends this zealot out just to give a bit more of a check can possibly start to take down some of those marines which are deciding to focus down the um, neutral supply depot to uh, enable a wall of some sort but taking the watchtower and then letting it go because there's nothing there or it's just the quickest route to go because it's pretty much a direct li a straight line apart from sometimes you have to avoid these if you've got a massive death ball but SCV just trundles in, finds pretty much nothing other than the double gas and um, stalker so probably wants to quickly back out and three marines, zealous and stalker see the wall and um, then start trying to take out supply depot, stalker keeping the uh, marines at bay because one stalker versus some marines is quite daunting however SCVs come up to uh, try and repair the supply depot and the supply depot actually lowers, which um, one of the SCVs almost goes down, but the stalker decides to back away on getting down to half health. And we have two Hellions coming out, so looks as though it's going to possibly be a 1 1 1, given that there's no other production. Yes, it's a 1 1 1. Uh, I didn't see a starport down there. Tasia being very sneaky with his starport placement. So, moving out with the Hellions and Marines probably to do some sort of harassment and the engineering bay blocking the expansion so the probe doing all its five damage to um, what does it do against armoured uh, it doesn't have a special against armoured but the three stalkers coming back to just help finish it up and the hellions group of them moving along the back passage to check there's no uh, scouting pylons or proxies and marines just hanging out at the watchtower just to make sure that there's uh, no other 
other army movement towards his base because any movement will go straight past the tower unless they unless he decides to be extremely sneaky. So it looks as though it's going to be a Hellion drop, and um, this will be quite an interesting piece of harassment. Actually misses that Hellion for a bit, but actually goes back and picks it up, and this is going to be in the bit of the main that's very often used for drops. Whenever I play in Tomb Valley, the ladder version, um, I quite often do a warp prism there, unless it's already been um, sort of cannoned or turreted. Turreted? Turreted? Um, any form of uh, acronym. I've just realised that I've set my graphics on low. I do this while laddering because if I've got a um, mass blink stalker or a mothership vortex then sometimes it can get a tiny bit hairy with um, FPS and not being able to micro as well but other than that um, I will try and get it to uh, well I will try and um, well no I will set the graphics to higher settings for the next game which will be game 2 um, unsurprisingly because this is game 1 I hope. I hope that the label replays are labelled correctly. I got these from the Asus Republic of Gamers replay pack, um, which is completely free. Uh, it's on the Team Liquid forums, and um, yeah, it was it was an awesome tournament. Absolutely loved the uh, hosting with In Control and Too Good. Absolutely hilarious. There's a highlights video up on YouTube. I can't remember if you just search for Asus ROG highlights, it will pop up. And uh, there's also a video of SKMC dancing Gangnam Style. And I know that his name's just MC, it's just I like to keep the, the team names in because the teams provide a huge amount of financial backing, um, partly thanks to sponsors um, who do who just really make all this able to happen. And um, people quite often forget the sponsors, but they are important. The Lone Observer deciding to head back. I th is there a missile turret going up? No, but there is another command center, so that's a third CC going up. Or morphing into uh, orbital command. And one engineering bit and the raven, that will be why the uh, observer backed out, because it didn't want to get taken out. And we have ground weapons coming up as well. Is that siege tech? Yes. Siege tech coming up as well as a couple of siege tanks, so it looks as though Tasia might try and turtle it a bit. Which is a bit, which is uh, something slightly uncommon because whenever I've seen him play, he's always been quite aggressive in his style. And we also have the second engineering bay coming up, two racks as well. So taking it up to three racks as well as um, three CC, three racks, and uh, factory. So transitioning out of the one 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 build because that uh, Hellion drop didn't really go as planned. If we go into the units loss tab. So it's lost some, but pretty much even, because Hellions cost more than uh, Stalkers, if I I believe. Um, I'll just go check that down here. No, Hellions are actually cheaper, but presumably he lost more of them. So, Missile Turret also here, in case uh, MC is going to do any of his Phoenix Harass, which he probably would have done already if... Um, if he was, but MC quite likes the Phoenix Harass to get, um, just put his opponent's economy off a bit. However, it's easy, it's quite easy to transition out of it. I've tried it a couple of times, but obviously not on a pro level. And moving out down the back corridor with this army, he's got a group of five zealots up here, not the highest of health, and I can hear a battle going on. And he's going to position his siege tanks. Can they get the Nexus? No, but they can get that pylon and that refinery. And they are going to try that. Now, that will be the battle I could hear. It's the third rock to the expansion. MC scans the high ground. I don't think... He, I think he'll see that there's nothing much there. High Templar forced to run away before it dies. Warping in some more zealots as well. And going to start to try and push back. Zealots at the moment just providing cannon fodder because there's nothing else on the high ground. Storms go down on the low ground. Will they finish the tanks off? One goes down. Will the Immortals? Yes, the Immortals will get the other one. 
So that attack did not from Tasia has been denied. Lone Marine just watching the watchtower and got an observer checking for the third, as well as three mules, so that'll provide it, provide a massive boost to the economy. Stim and combat shield going down as well, which uh, should help the marine survivability. Well, I suppose it's um, a quid pro quo because combat shield gives you more health, but stim then takes it away. However, you can stim more times if you've got combat shield, and I believe that is uh, ground armor too. Yes, for MC. So. Factory has been raised up, so it looks as though there's going to be a factory scout. And is that another Rax behind the factory? Yes, it is. So now going up to nine Rax. So really pumping up the production and armory going down, as well as dual engineering bay. And um, so he's sitting at one one now. However, MC quickly getting to what's his other upgrade? Two one. So. It's really going to probably be slightly pretty even thanks to the upgrades and um, army size. However, MC does have the four high Templar, all with storms. So Tasia really can't afford to get all his units balled up. And there's one storm goes down. I don't think it does much. Turn on health bars. Um, medivacs, quite a lot of them for the relative number of units. And my screen is zipping all over the place for no reason getting some ghosts with cloaking will we be able to, to see some nukes I just watched the um, trial of the Zell Naga Vods um, a really hilarious tournament put on by uh, Day9 it's just not serious in the least um, and Tasia actually looking as though he's going to try to use the third to provide some sort of an, a different angle from the way that he's coming in down the side passage but that might be denied by oh he's moved his uh, army back into the natural will he keep it on the bridge is it on patrol no but level one level two armor about to fill up finish up as well as concussive shells for the terran and level and two two uh armor weapons as well just started and uh, level one uh, ground weapons for the protoss so at the moment i th well once they finish up i think it will oh no level three armor for mc so by the time that finishes up i think that mc will have the slight advantage however we are seeing an quite a lot of ghosts coming out for tasia six of them to be exact now down to four because two have just finished up but will he be going nuke? Not yet. Planetary Fortress going up at the 4th. As well as his MMM army, Marine Mordor Medivac. Which is basically one of the best compositions you can have. Taking out the proxy pylon from MC. Presumably he saw something on either a scan or just units streaming from that base. And MC looks as though he's taking the opportunity to come past, um, leave, leave um, Tasia distracted. However, he has faltered because he saw the Marine at the Watchtower and knew that that would mean that Tasia would know where he is. Factory Scout coming over because he doesn't need to produce any more factory units. And if he does, he'll just build another factory. Another Starport and those Command Centers. Yes, so two more Command Centers coming in addition to the three that he already has. Um, it reminds me of a game from, I can't remember which tournament it is, it was, I think it might have been another Asus Rog, where Tasia decided, oh it was the one that I must, I think it was the one that I cast against Hero, where um, he decided to get about 10 CCs and planetary fortresses, it made me feel as though I was watching um, a Funday Monday, and we are seeing a major engagement here, will the Zealots be able to clean up, do they have Zealot legs? Yes they do have Zealot legs, however they are getting taken out. Preemptive storm, ghosts run through the storm, but it doesn't do that much damage. Ghost starts sniping units off. Presumably, they want to uh, EMP the archon to take that out of the mix, stop the splash damage. But there is a high number of medevacs, so any storms will underneath them will probably be healed up quite quickly. That uh, small fa small faction should get cleaned up pretty quickly, but the medevacs are doing an excellent job of healing. Here come the archons to try and do some splash damage. However, 
I don't think it'll be successful. Focusing, the beginning to focus down the Immortals. Sh two have gone down, shields on one have gone down. Ghosts trying to snipe off as many things as possible. Two more Archons morphing in, one successfully, that one will go down before it finishes morphing in. And MC doesn't really have any more forces, he's just warping in Zealots, which, get which are getting taken down pretty effectively. If you go over to Unit Counting Station, we've got one Immortal, one Archon, one Stalker, seven Zealots, which won't be able to hold off these 20 24 now Marines. 15 Ghosts, which is a hell of a lot. Oh, that is a good storm though. Managed to take down quite a few Marines. And Tasia decides to pack up and move on. None of those units that uh, MC has, apart from the Lone Stalker, actually have any air capability. However... Ah, there's a drop at the 4th for MC, and um, those Archons warping in a lot of Zealots as well, because Zealots are good against uh, Marine Mortar, not so much Medivac, because they can't shoot the air. And, um, oh, he's, might, he might be caught out of position, MC might be caught out of position, takes down that one Marauder, what are the upgrades at the moment? It is 3-1, soon to be 3-2 against 2-2, two, two, so MC will have the upgrade advantage with 5 Archons all in the triangle formation. Um, warping even more High Templar, presumably for Storms or more Archons, dealing the splash damage. And the question is, will MC decide to go for Shield Tech? Because Shield Tech will make those Archons survive pretty much forever. Because 350 Shields, and then with level 3 Shields. Cloak going down, I think that's for ghosts. Yes, it'll be for ghosts. But the another mainly Marauder army coming in, focusing down the third. This will severely cripple MC's economy. Tejo on four bases, MC now on two. I don't think that uh, MC will be able to come back from the loss of that. However, the ghosts, th there's more ghosts than Marauders and Marines, by the looks of it. And there's the GG from MC. And, um,. Yeah, when uh, once that base just once uh, the third, well, first the fourth and then the third fell, MC really had no hope because even with warp gates and chronoing out, um, chronoing out um, units, I think that's third, no, twelve gate at the moment. Even with twelve gates chronoing that, once you're off, uh, once you're on two bases, the maximum number of gates you can support is only about eight. So he'd have had four redundant gates. And um, that was a slight problem for MC, so he tapped out. And we go on to game number two, in which the graphics should be severely improved. 